Welcome back, everyone. Last time, we discussed the general method of converting units. In this video, we will take a closer look at the metric system, also known as the International System of Units, or SI units. The metric system has what are called base units, which include the unit of meters to measure length, units of liters, to measure volume, and units of grams to measure weight or mass, as well as many other base units. Rather than making separate units to measure the same quantities at different scales, the metric system places prefixes before the base unit to adjust their scale. For example, the base unit of length, the meter, is on the scale of a yard for US units but attach the prefix kilo for kilometers and now we have a unit of length in the metric system that is on the scale of miles attach the prefix centi for centimeter and we now have a unit that is on the scale of inches these prefixes apply to all base units in the metric system making it both versatile and easy to keep track of what units are measuring. Another strength of the metric system is how straightforward moving between prefixes is. Take a look at this table. In the center, we have our base unit, which would be where our normal grams, meters, and liters would be. As we go to the left, we will be moving towards the larger units. And as we move to the right, we'll be going towards the smaller scale units. For each space we move left or right on this table, there is a factor of 10 difference in the scale. Consider our base unit being one unit, or I'll just abbreviate unit as U. This could be one meter, one liter, and so on. If that's the case, then one space to the left, getting the deca prefix will be 10 of our base unit U. So one deca unit is 10 of our base unit. For something I'll note in a moment, I'm going to write the 10 as 10 to the 1 power. Then moving another space to the left for hecto, this will now be 100 base units. And I'll write that 100 as 10 squared. And finally kilo will be 1000 of our base units which I will write as 10 to the third power. Going back to the center base unit, and now moving towards the right, we go into our smaller units, starting with deca, which will now be 0.1 of our base unit u. I can then write this as 10 to the negative one power. Another space to the right puts us at centa, where we will have 0.01 of our base units in one centa unit, which can be written as 10 to the negative 2. And one more space to the right leaves us with the milli prefix, which is now 0.001 of our base unit u, which I can rewrite as 10 to the minus 3. Because of this simple factor of 10 difference between adjacent prefixes, conversions between metric units with different prefixes is always either a multiplication or division by some power of 10. When moving between prefixes, you want to look at or visualize this table and just count how many spaces you will be moving. Let's say we wanted to move from a smaller unit like our base unit over to the left towards the larger units like kilo. That would be moving one, two, three times to the left. To make the conversion numerically, if we are now saying we're moving n times to the left, we're moving from our smaller unit to a bigger unit, so our numbers will look smaller compared to that scale, meaning we should divide by the factor 10 to the n power. Or equivalently, we can simply move the decimal in our number n times to the left. On the other hand, if we are going towards our smaller units from our base unit, such as 
to milli from the base unit to milli would be three movements to the right. And now we're in a smaller scale unit. So what started in our base units should now look like a much bigger number on this scale. So to make this conversion from a general movement of n times to the right, we would now want to multiply by the factor of 10 to the n power. Or equivalently, move the decimal n times to the right. The simple method of moving the decimal shows why we organize our table with the larger units on the left and the smaller units on the right. Setting up the table in this manner lets us move the decimal in the same direction we are moving across this table. Let's work through some examples to show how this works. First off, consider converting 8,475 meters to kilometers. We could use the method we discussed in our previous video, making the ratio from the conversion factor of 1,000 meters equals 1 kilometer, but let's utilize the method we just discussed. Here we are starting in our base unit of meters and want to move to the prefix kilo. Looking at our table, this means that we want to move 1, 2, 3 spaces to the left, which means we can take our number 8,475 and divide by 10 to that 3 power. Taking 8,475 and dividing by the 10 to the 3rd, or 1,000, will give us 8.475, and we are now in kilometers. Equivalently, we could have moved the decimal over 1, 2, 3 times to the left, just like we moved on our table, and this would give us the same answer of 8.475, now in kilometers. Next, let's consider converting 0.025 kiloliters to centiliters. Well, we are now starting in the prefix of kilo, so we are over here, and want to end up in centiliters, which means we want to go over here, and to do that we'll move 1, 2, 3, 4, five spaces across this table. With that in mind, we can either multiply by 10 to the fifth, or much more simply, take our number and move the decimal that many times in the same direction. Moving the decimal five spaces to the right and filling in the zeros that are missing ends up giving us 2,500 now in centiliters. And for one last example, to make sure we have it understood, consider converting 271.1 milligrams to grams. So now we're starting over here in the milli prefix, and gram is our base unit, so we want to end up here. And to do that, we will move one, two, three spaces to the left. Moving three spaces to the left on our table means we can take the decimal and move three spaces to the left as well. Moving our decimal here ends up giving us 0 0.2711 and we are now in grams. With that, we have shown the relative simplicity of the metric system and how easy it is to convert between units. Understanding how to convert between these units is particularly important in the fields of science. Until next time. Thank you.